Hi everybody, I'm Marcy Newman, your Heart Shift Coach, and welcome to Conversations for Peace. This is day eight, and so today we'll continue the conversations, putting our focused energy on peace for the purpose of learning more about peace, learning how to cultivate more energy of peace, learning about the potential of that energy to create happier and healthier lives, and also learning about energy itself and how you can step into your own power and be more involved in the creative process of your life on a more aware and conscious level. So yesterday we spoke about the mind principle and how it influences the energy field. The energy field is essentially a mirror for all of your thoughts, your beliefs, the actions that you've taken and your reactions and responses to them. What happens is with every interaction, whether that is an image that you have taken in a thought, a belief, a circumstance, an exchange with someone else, you are taking in the energy of that circumstance. Now, as a creative power that you are, every single one of those circumstances is in your field because you have chosen it. You have chosen to put your focused energy on that experience. Now you might be saying, why would I ever choose to experience this, 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 and this? It was horrendous. It's not as much as having chosen that, although you may certainly have, but it is the decision that you have made to stay focused on the situation which creates an expanded version of that, an expansion that often begins then to permeate the entire energy field. And of course, is extended outwards in more and more of your experiences. So I want to talk about something that we started to discuss yesterday in terms of how powerful your choices in regards to what you allow to come into your field. If you have been taking in images that are disturbing to you, that are creating anxiety or stress or fear for your future, you have the choice whether or not to continue to focus on those images or to let them go. The mind principle that I spoke of yesterday actually talks about the fact that when we take our focus off of an image that has gotten stuck in our energy field, once we take it off and we start to put our focus on an energy that has a different frequency, the original image will actually disappear. In truth, this is kind of how healing works. Every time that we let go of something that's leaving a toxic residue, we initiate systems, many different reactions, many of them chemical reactions, that then bring us back into energetic alignment with being happy and healthy, experiencing life more from a place of being whole. So if we look at this a little bit further, we begin to understand that when the world is creating so many opportunities for us to get caught up in images, beliefs, and thoughts that are going to leave toxic residue in our energy field. It is our responsibility to clean it up. It's our responsibility to identify it and to choose not to put our focused attention on it. 
So why am I bringing this up? Well, so often I hear people talk about, you know, well, what do they have to do with it? You know, the world is this, the world is that, and they take on this whole role of being a victim. And yet I can tell you from my own personal experience and from thousands of people that I've worked with that you can shift it. You can change where you choose to focus your attention and I'm here to tell you that your whole life changes. There simply are things that will no longer exist in your awareness. Now, I know some people will tell you that you might have your head in the sand or that you're off in la-la land someplace and have no idea what's really going on. But the truth of the matter is you have to start asking yourself the question, well, how valuable is my happiness? How valuable is my health? How valuable is my well-being? How am I more productive? Am I more productive being consumed by fear and hatred and anger and separation? Or am I more productive in being happy? being joyful, being kind, extending gratitude, being gracious, being tender. These are the questions we must ask ourselves because everything that you're taking in is having an effect on you. So imagine this field that's so sensitive to energy being constantly bombarded with all of those energies that are so toxic and leave such toxic residue. How do you think that you'll feel? As opposed to taking in things that actually make you feel good, having conversations that are uplifting and inspirational, having conversations where it is creative Minds, hearts coming together, collaborating to create more of that feeling of good. So what I'm talking about is that each and every one of us is influencing our worlds. And if ever there were a time where perhaps we are in need of a greater humanity, a humanity mean, meaning the family of all humans on the earth, having a need for each and every one of us to step up our game, to be a little softer, a little more forgiving, a little more compassionate, a little more kind, a little more generous. This is that time. I know I spoke, I've forgotten which day now, about how important it is to make certain that energetically the energy is just flowing through so that you don't get stuck in any particular belief system that is going to create any sort of inflexibility with you. Flexibility is key now. It's key because it leads to resiliency. We must be resilient. We must know how to fortify the energy that feeds us and feeds our well being. Some of these things, and I've talked about in the past, are things that are completely unique to you. But some things, as I'm speaking of tonight, are are actually so further expanded only under circumstances where we are coming together as a collaborative effort. Peace is one of those energies. Yes, I am working to be peaceful every day. And I'm hoping that I'm inspiring you to do the same. 
but we need to inspire enough peace to actually create peace on earth. And so it is the responsibility of each and every one of us if we truly want a greater humanity, we have to begin as greater humans and come together, hearts, minds, and compassionate action in order to start to create this greater humanity that has the ability to impact our world, and all of the precious, precious lives within it. So before I take my peace pledge to you, I would like to invite you to go to my website and get your own copy. I'm inviting you to join with me every day. When you see these videos pop up, know that at the end of it, I'm taking the peace pledge. And if you, at that same time, can put your energy, your focused attention on those words and the feeling that it, that it brings forward from your heart, well then, we're at least two people who are working together to create greater humans, and eventually, we will create a greater humanity. My website is heartshiftcoach.com. There are two things there for you, completely free. One is seven ways to cultivate peace and the other is the peace pledge. So here we go. Here's my pledge to you. I pledge to extend peace throughout my entire circle of influence through cultivating my own peaceful heart, my clear intentions, taking personal responsibility, and of course, initiating compassionate action, making certain that my actions are an extension of the energy of my heart rather than my head. I take this peace pledge very seriously and I pass it right here and right now from my heart to yours. Peace in, peace out. Peace in, peace out. Peace out. Until tomorrow, next time. Of course, I would love to have your comments, questions. If you wanna hop on here and talk with me about peace and share your thoughts with the world, please just let me know. Leave your comments below. But in the meantime, know that I hold you in my very peaceful heart. Bye-bye.